I'm Stuart Cox. Today we're talking education. That's why I'm, I just happen to be wearing this, but it demands respect. It's serious business, it's education of boys. In response to a report saying that one third of students hadn't completed their degree within six years, dropouts were massive problems. It had me asking the question, where are the boys at with education? Early development. The Australian Early Development Census of 2015, there's 15.5% of girls and 28 0.5% of boys are developmentally vulnerable in one or more areas. 42% of indigenous and 47% of those in very remote areas. Makes me kind of stress about my uh, little relatives who are growing up out in the West. It's not really a great start, is it, for the lads? Those in high socioeconomic areas are least likely to be vulnerable. I think my tie's slipping down. Middle schooling literacy. Everyone loves a literacy test, don't they? Uh, based on the 2009 program for international student assessment for 15 year olds, the average difference between girls and boys in literacy equated to about one year. In the 2011 test of the same name, girls did both better internationally and also in Australia. Grade three, grade five, grade seven, Grade nine, girls always outperforming the boys. Dr. Kevin Donnelly, director of Education Standards Institute, even says boys have struggled due to the changing nature of teaching. Very much a drop off in male teachers. Teaching methods have gradually changed and testing protocols have become more feminized. Very dangerous words here. I know I'm gonna get some comments. Less two word answers, fellas, and more explain or Discuss, please. Boys are also more likely to have behavioural problems. Suspensions, double for boys. Naughty, naughty. Tertiary education. 2014 education department figures. The number of girls completing tertiary courses, 129,045. The number of male graduates, 86,000. 337. Study that uh, started this whole sort of discussion. Where are the missing students between, uh, you know, entrances and not completing courses. Indigenous, low socioeconomic background students, or in regional and remote locations. Kind of a bit of a pattern, don't you think? Now let's get to what the effects of poor education are. The 2014 juvenile detention figures were 91% were male, mm -hmm, and 52% of those in detention are indigenous. Some 50% of young offenders are highlighted as having serious undiagnosed oral disorders, which basically equates to poor literacy. Poor boys, and I'm gonna quote here, the combined effects of poor academic achievement, family dysfunction, and low socioeconomic status are significant predictors for deviant peer affiliation and engagement with youth justice authorities. I can refer you to these studies if you want, but seriously, it's been pretty heavy reading, took a lot of research. You don't wanna do it. Now we get on to prison. Who makes up the prisons? 92% are men. 27% are indigenous. Guess what? Prisoners, record levels, poor numeracy and poor literacy. What do we need to do? One, we need more men in schools, both as teachers and as role models for both boys and girls. Two, we need strategies to bring the boys back up to the girls' levels. Three, we need to prioritise those in the most at-risk areas. Indigenous, in very remote areas, from low socioeconomic backgrounds. It's the same thing with the same issues. That's enough here. I'm sweating bullets in this outfit. We'll be back again, looking at something that pops up, no doubt, some big issues, because that's where we're about. We just want to highlight what the problems are and how do we get better outcomes for these boys.